Okay, Jess. Okay. Welcome to our Education on Air conference. Over the next two months, over 70 presenters will be leading discussions on over 100 educational topics. Thanks to all the presenters for giving their time to this and to all of you for watching. To watch any of the sessions, simply go to our website, uh, and we will paste that into the chat window in just a moment. You can find a list of all the sessions and links to the presenters, uh, Google Plus pages, on the conference website. Um, I'm also, let's see, in a moment I will introduce you to your speaker. My role today is to um, go through and gather questions from all of you who are watching uh, the live stream of this video. So we will be watching in the chat room and uh, to handle your questions and pose them to Katie. Uh, if you'd like to pose a question to Katie and others, please write it into the comment section below. Uh, and frequently we will be looking at the comment stream to find questions. Uh, let's see here. Please open Katie's Google page. Um, well, actually, maybe you don't need to do that. Do that, Katie. Um, let's see. So let me tell you a little bit about Katie Grasso. Um, I have known Katie for a long time now. We both were teachers together in the Seymour Community School District. Um, she has been there for several years as a veteran teacher in the business education department. She uh, is the lead advisor for FBLA and has been what I would consider a pioneer for educational technology, not only in her district, district, but uh, in Northeast Wisconsin, but she's also willing to branch out to um, state organizations and schools looking for support. And she's recently uh, done the Google Teacher Academy in um, California, and she's obviously also a Google certified teacher. Um, let's see here. Uh, the other speakers, would you please introduce yourself, if that would be okay? Kurt? Hi, my name is Kurt Wismer. I'm a teacher at Shiocton High School. I previously also had the privilege of working with Katie Gressel at Seymour for eight years. Um, I teach business marketing information technology here at Shiocton. Uh, also, um, in the observer, observer, um, advisor for FBLA, our student uh, business organization, and I've just uh, recently became a Google certified trainer. Sure. I'm Sherry Stucy, teach at Belleville High School. I also advise um, FBLA. Known Katie for several years, working together, and I guess that's it. <laughs> I'm Teresa. Teresa. I am Teresa Noiser. I work for CISA 7. I am the distance learning coordinator, but I also do Google training for uh, CISA 7 districts, and um, I haven't gone as far as being a Google certified trainer, but I ha I am an individual Google trainer, um, and I've known Katie for a few years now. I want to thank you for the introduction, Jessica, and that is who introduced me as Jessica Brogley, uh, and she is uh, also an education technology specialist, I would say, in the classroom, and she is teaching down in southwest Wisconsin at Southwest uh, Tech School. Um, and we are here today to talk about uh, your life in Chrome and basically what the browser Chrome can do for your web experience um, personally or professionally when you're taking a look at what you can do um, to enhance your browsing experience. I've gone through and I do have um, a presentation that I'm going to be walking through just to get us uh, going on um, and I will have this presentation linked also on the comment section below this presentation. Um, what we have here is my Gmail address as well as a link to my Google Plus profile. When we take a look at um, why using Chrome, um, it's just a browser. Oftentimes what I'm going to hear from um, people is like, what, what browser does it matter that I do things on? Well, uh, you will find just like you use certain software packages for what you want to do, you will actually want to use uh, a certain browser specifically for what you want to do also. Um, I have found there are certain websites that do truly work better in one browser over another, but I would say 97% um, of the time when I'm on the web and I'm surfing and doing different activities, I'm going to be making sure that I'm using the browser uh, Chrome. So what I have here is just a little short little video about uh, why I use Chrome as just a browser. When the web started, websites were simple. 
they had text. When you were sick of text, you could have more text. And then an image, and then more text. The web, in essence, was about reading. Doing was reserved for programs you installed in your computer. Over time, though, websites evolved. They became faster and more responsive, and added richer graphics, audio, video, and animations. Today, websites offer features that are pretty much like those found in applications installed from a CD. We can write and send emails, play games, edit photos, watch videos, and more. One of the cool things about web apps, as we could call this new generation of websites, is that you never have to update them. Every time you visit Gmail, for example, you automatically enjoy its latest version with its newest features. And you can use web apps from any device with a browser. Your office computer, your personal laptop, even your phone. At Google, we designed our web browser, Chrome, specifically to run web apps, keeping it faster and up-to-date with the latest web features, like 3D graphics and apps that work offline. We've now taken Chrome's support for web apps to the next level with the Chrome Web Store, our new online marketplace. Try a web app from the Chrome Web Store, and you'll get a colorful new shortcut to this app in your new tab page. And don't worry, you can easily remove an app if you want to. There are thousands more apps waiting for you to discover them at chrome.google.com slash web store. Have fun exploring. Uh, I like that video just because it really does give you a true overview of the difference between what you can do in Chrome versus what you can do um, in, in other browsers. I, I know a lot of people really truly enjoy doing iDevices because of the personalization and how they can make it their own and that's really what you can do with Chrome also once you get in and you start exploring some of um, the options that are available. Um, I just found some of these graphics. The one on the left truly makes me laugh a lot because I have young kids that enjoy watching Dora and Diego. Um, so that one it made me giggle a little bit. And I oftentimes will also have students uh, try to egg me on a little bit and talk about using Internet Explorer. And I say, why, yes, Internet Explorer is very good at downloading Chrome. Go ahead and try it out for yourself. <laughs> Um, the icon for Chrome right down here is also a link that will take you to the spot where you can go ahead and put in um, or download Chrome if you don't have Chrome on your device. If you're looking at an iDevice, you will be able to find uh, Chrome as a free download in the iTunes web store as, as well, and I have that installed on my iPad that I use at home also just to try to keep my browsing experience similar across all different platforms. Um, one of the first things that I think is confusing for people is the difference between signing into Chrome versus signing into your Google account. Um, oftentimes when you uh, get into Chrome for the first time you're going to see this screen on the left hand side where it's going to tell you to actually sign into Chrome. It's going to say welcome to Chrome. You don't know how smart you are. You are now using the best browser. And you'll get the screen, the sign in screen there and basically what you'll do with the sign in screen is you're going to actually sign into your um, a Chrome account. And what that does is it allows that no matter what you see for your browsing experience, you're going to sign in and sync it. And you're going to need to use that one of your, using one of your Google accounts. Um, for example, I have two Google accounts. I have my personal Gmail account and I have my school Google, Google Apps for Education domain account. And um, right now I have all of my Chrome uh, apps and extensions synced using my school account. So when I sign into Chrome, I'm actually using my school domain account. And what does that mean? If I go down to the public library tonight and I launch the browser Chrome, I don't have to go through and try to find my bookmarks, my apps and extensions that I like to use for browsing. I would go to Chrome and then I would uh, go in the upper right hand corner if it's not giving me an option to log in and go to sign into Chrome. And I would log in using my um, email and my password and then what will happen is when Chrome gets me in it will preload all my apps and extensions for me. It will also give me any of my bookmarks or favorites that I have set up because it remembers my browsing experience and I think that's one of the best features about Chrome is that you can take it no matter where you're at. I go home, visit my parents four and a half hours away, I go on their computer, I sign into Chrome and I have everything just like I'm sitting at my computer at home and I don't have to worry 
worry about going to find it again. Or the other famous thing for those of you that work in a school district is uh, it's getting towards June and then IT sends out a request saying, hey, don't forget, we're going to wipe out your computers. You need to make sure you save your bookmarks and favorites. And then they send you this list of directions that nobody can follow and then they come back and all their bookmarks and favorites are gone. You don't have to worry about that when you're using the browser Chrome. So the power of signing into Chrome is going to be one of the best things that you can do. Um, if you're not taking, taking that into account, that's one of the first things I would do is make sure you do get signed into your Chrome account. Um, one of the new things that, have, that has come out within the last um, week is the fact that Google Apps for Education Schools or Google Apps for Business Schools can actually now manage Chrome across all of its users. Not Chrome the operating systems like a Chromebook, but um, since April 18th, the management council that will help manage everything can actually dictate if students sign in with their uh, school account, you, you can actually push out apps and ex extensions to their browsing experience if they're on their computer at home or if they're going to be at um, a computer in your building. And that is something new and I know that caught uh, some of the IT people off guard. Um, I was gone last week for a state FBLA conference and I was getting an email saying my default launch page has changed in Chrome. I came back and did a little investigation and uh, Google made this change and they pushed it out and then we just kind of go back a little bit and go from there. What we have here is this is the information that has been sent out by Google talking about what you get to do uh, for setting your Chrome policies for um, anyone. In here it has a lot of um, explanations of what you can do to have things preset or to enable for your users. And again, this is set up specifically for anyone that is using a Google Apps for Education domain or if you have somebody that is using a Google Business account. So if you found anything that has changed a little bit in your districts, that could be one of the reasons why. Um, managing your new tabs, one of the, the things that is also nice is when you're using the, the browser Chrome, is you want to make sure that you set your tabs. And oftentimes when I have students talk to me, depending on how busy a day I'm having in the classroom, I'll have a class walk in and say, anyone want to guess the number of tabs I have open today? And sometimes they're close, but sometimes I, I wow them and say, nope, I think I have 25 tabs open. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you manage your new tabs. And I like this video here, so we'll watch that one. When you open a new tab in Chrome, you see the new tab page. We recently redesigned this page to make it easier to manage your apps and most visited sites, which now appear in different sections on the page. To flip between these different sections, click the labels at the bottom of the page or the arrows at the side of the page. You can drag and drop apps to rearrange them. And if there's something here you don't want, just by dragging it to the bottom right. A trash can will appear where you can drop the item to remove it. Something missing? You can add new items from the Chrome Web Store, where there are thousands of games and other apps to explore. Enjoy! Um, again, when you when you take a look at having your new tabs page, having that organized in a way where you can find things, a lot of students and, and faculty members will actually miss on the very bottom of your new tab that you can actually go to most visited and your apps as a way to easily go back and forth between them. Um, when you get a lot of people that get in and actually customize their Chrome experience, you're going to find some things that will pop up a lot differently. Um, one of the common questions I get when, when working with people on Chrome is going to be the difference between apps and extensions. What I have here is a screenshot of my Google toolbar. And as you can see, I have a lot of extensions. Extensions are always going to show up to the right of your um, address bar. So these are all the different extensions that I had up at any given point. I don't use them all all the time, but I will go through and add new ones and take ones off. So again, they're always going to appear to the right of your omnibar. And you actually can also have some extensions that will appear when you right click. And I'm going to talk about some of my favorite extensions that I use. Um, and then we'll show you how you can use them. Uh, right here is a list of some of my more favorite extensions that I can use. 
uh, the, the GUI GL shortener is a way for you to go ahead and get a shortened URL as well as a QR code. And if you set it up, you can actually save that information to your Google account. And you can actually see how many times you get a hit on that. Um, I will. I have found in different presentations that your Google GL shortener, that link will not work in Internet Explorer. It gives them an error message and it won't take them to that site. Um, so I'll just kind of show you what Google um, GL shortener does. So what I would do is I'd be on a website. And again, here are my extensions up here on the very top. I would go to my Google GL shortener, which looks like um, a vice grip. I would click on it. It would pop up, and it gives me this shortened URL right here. I can go ahead and copy this. What I need to remember when I hand this out to people if they're going to be typing it in is that upper and lowercase letters matter. You can't type it all in uppercase or lowercase. And sometimes you'll get one that will have an O or a zero in it. And it gets confusing to people to say an O or a zero, so you want to make sure that I would just do it again to get a different one. But if you wanted to make a QR code from this web page too, the Google GL, Google GL, you can just click right here on QR code. It gives you the QR code, and oftentimes I like to go ahead and right click, uh, or I'll click on it again, and it would open it up in, its, in a new page, and then I can right click and save that image as, and then you can create any website that you want a QR code. That's one of the easiest ways that I've found to add that. And again, that is just the um, extension the Google GL shortener uses it for any website. I talk about adding it to your history. So here again, I clicked on it again and it gave me a different one with a zero and I don't like it so I would click off. And here it gave me a, uh, a third option with the IY93K. I would click on add to history and I have this tied to my school do, uh, Google domain. I would type it in here and it would shorten it and then it would go through and give me more information. I can see how many hits that I had on that. Um, the next one I have up here is going to be my Shareaholic. If I have any people that, that like Pinterest, maybe, I don't know. Um, you have up here, you have your um, Shareaholic that you can go ahead and click on. And when it pops up, I can go ahead and share any of the information on this page on any one of these. If I wanted to do it to Gmail, I wouldn't have to copy the URL and then open up my Gmail and then send it. I can go ahead and do it right from here. Um, again, I have Blogger, I have Pinterest, and I have all kinds of options here that I can go ahead and do right from my browsing experience instead of opening up that tab and copying and pasting. Um, same thing, you have one here for Pinterest. Uh, that icon looks right here. It just says pin because it's Shareaholic for Pinterest. That basically just takes you where you can go ahead and any image, whatever you want to put on your Pinterest boards, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, split screen is an interesting one. Um, I'm fairly spoiled because at work I actually have two monitors and I can go ahead and work between the two of them but what you can do with split screen which is this icon here you click on it and it actually takes your browser and gives you two different URLs so I can actually type in on one monitor and I put a URL in, of course, that didn't work. And it allows me to, within a smaller window screen, to go ahead and see two windows at once. So that's a, the split screen. Of course, it's not loading my profile page. Uh, so that, again, is the extension for split screen. Um, web page and webcam screenshot is one of the ways when I'm going through and using Chrome if I need to do screenshots or any other um, things within Chrome or Google Apps it's going to come up right here and when you are on a web page all you have to do is click on the web page screenshot it, it, it pops up and it says what do you want to capture I want to do an all page screen a visible screen a webcam and then if I want to do an all-page screenshot, it actually scrolls down, grabs the whole entire page. It will go ahead and come up, and I can go through and add text on the page. If I had my hands on home row and make it even better. Mm -hmm. 
go ahead and draw arrows on to whatever you would need to point out on this also. So that is also a nice way of being able to take screenshots and then you can just save this image and go ahead and put it into any Google Doc. One of the nice things that you can do with this also is you have the option of where you want to save it to and you could automatically just save it right directly to your um, Google Drive. Um, tab Cloud is one that I was just working on today. Oftentimes you have so many tabs that you want to have open and you want to quickly switch between a group of them. Tab Cloud is an extension that I have listed right up here on the very top. When I click on it, you can see that I have a couple different ones here depending on how many different browsers of Chrome I have open. I have three browsers of Chrome open right now and each one it says click to name, click to name, click to name. But the two on the bottom are the ones that I've created previously that I can go ahead and go to at any time. So I can go ahead and click on Take Google with you. This is a project that I'm working on. We have seniors that are graduating and I need to get directions out to them on how they can take all their Google products with them um, once they're um, Google Apps for Education domain. So what I just did is using Tab Cloud is I created a group of two different pages that I want to have access to any time and all I have to do is click on this plus sign right here and it's going to open up those two pages and I don't have to go back and remember what they are and I can actually just automatically have that saved. So another one of those that I have under there is my default pages that I want to have open every day at school and I have that the school start page so at any time I want if I'm on another computer because this is an extension that goes with me I can click right here and that would start all of my pages there. So again that one is your tab cloud. Um, uh, Speak It, I think, is a nice one that you can use. I will find um, an email that my husband sent me. And what I can do is, here is some text that's on the email. I can go ahead and highlight that. And up here, in the upper corner, is my convert text to speech. All I need to do is click on that icon with whatever I've highlighted. It has not been on Valentine's WKN for 23 years. So that extension will actually go through and actually read text back. So if you needed that type of assistance in your classroom, you can certainly go through and use that extension so you can actually have it read out. Uh, not super fancy text, but again, you have some um, voice recognition going back with that one. Um, Cloud Save, I would have to say, is one of my highlight uh, ones that I like to use a lot because I use it specifically when I'm on a Chromebook and I want to have things saved. Um, for example, I'm going to go through and I'm going to uh, research uh, snowmobiles. For those of you that know me, that's a fairly uh, common topic that I like to discuss. So I can go here to Images. And uh, this is what comes up really specific when we're taking a look at um, uh, using a Chromebook and you need to get images and they want to go through and collect things and they're not using the research tool. Once you have the um, extension Cloud Save uh, installed, what you can do is you can actually right click on anything and then I have this option right here for Cloud Save and I have an option within Cloud Save to save this image to my Google Docs or Drive, Picasa, Dropbox or anymore and all I have to do is just go ahead and click on save that and it would save that image right to my Google Docs. How helpful is that when you're taking a look at uh, using a Chromebook when you got to figure out where did that save? Is it on the hard drive, that little space of memory that's on your Chromebook and it'll automatically link it there. Especially if you have a um, Dropbox account and you want to put a bunch of things there, that is awesome to do. Uh, turn off the lights is also a good extension when you're taking a look at watching some YouTube channels and you don't want all of that extra uh, garbage to come up, come up alongside. So when you go to YouTube, I'll go to my channel that I have just a few accounting videos on. Here's the uh, most recent video that I put, uh, put up today. This is my lecture on Work Together 12-2. If you're really excited about learning how to do some um, calculating your payroll, which I know you all are. <laughs> So again, all I need to do when I have this extension installed is I don't want you to see all of this um, Mechlera shift parity on the right hand side. I'm going to click on my extension right here to turn off the lights and it darkens everything else around it and it forces you just to watch the image in the middle. You don't have to have it go to a different website, you can just go right to YouTube and you can go ahead and just uh, use your turn off lights. 
those are some of my top extensions that I like to use. Do I have any um, anyone else with me that would like to share any extensions that you use? I just I, did a lot. I can chime in. Yes. Please. The couple that I use, um, the Digo um, Capture Browser, for those of you that are also using Digo, I use that as an extension, um, which works really well. And then the other one that I just came across, um, I always, when my students are doing research papers, I have to make sure that they cite it properly. In Chrome, there's an easy bib. Um, oh, Easybib.com yeah, yeah. is a great way that you can cite um, content, um, MLA formatting, and that they've got an extension as well. I use that one quite often. You can if you talk to your Google Apps for Education domain um, administrator, they can actually force install that across your whole entire domain too. Got it. Um, I use uh, Evernote has an extension, I think, um, that I have built in. So I can web clip stuff and send it right to Evernote. Um, and then um, I use, a, to collect bookmarks and stuff, I use a, an extension called Pearl Trees. Uh, actually, Pearl Trees is a website tool to, to harvest links and cool stuff. But it, um, the extension for Pearl Trees lets you take a link and ship it right to Pearl Trees automatically. It's really sweet, um, very handy. Um, and then I use another one called, I think it's called Tweet This. So if there's something great I find on Twitter, um, I just click Tweet This and it um, pops up a little window and I can tweet it basically um, fast. Excellent. There's another one called, I haven't used it very much, but called Screencast that lets you record video of your Chrome browser. So wherever you're browsing, you can capture what you're doing and then create a video of that. And what's that called? It is called Screencast. Wonderful. And how many, how long videos can you make with that? I'm not sure. Okay. There's a website to go with it, so if you go to your extensions and look that up. I'll look it up right now. <laughs> Um, one other one that I use because uh, I tend to teach web design is there is an extension called Measure It. Um, it's kind of hard for students to go through and figure out how big a pixel is. My extension is located right up here and I click on it and then what I can do is the, the students can actually highlight whatever they want and it will give them the exact pixel dimension of whatever they have highlighted. So this would teach them that it's 137 pixels wide by 77 pixels high. So and that is real specific to web design, but I like to use that also. And that's called measure this? Measure it. Measure it. Yep. That would have solved problems today that I was using. <laughs> you can talk to me soon. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is going to be apps, because apps and extensions are just a little bit different. Um, extensions, again, are always going to appear to the right of your omnibar, so let's go through and talk about what some applications or apps can do for you. That's usually what most people are familiar to hearing about when they go through and use your iDevices. Um, you're going to find your apps are going to be loaded when you hit New Tab, and then they're going to show up in the Apps section. Um, mm -hmm. When you go to find apps and extensions, you're going to need to go to the Chrome Store, which is a wonderful place to go, and it's all kinds of free shopping. Um, I just realized I have a typo on this page. It's supposed to say Incredible Start page instead of Incredible. But, you know, we'll go from there. Uh, Incredible Start page is uh, the launching page for everything that I do in Chrome. When I click on New Tab up on the top, you are going to find that my new tab does not look like your new tab because this is my, well, incredible start page. And what happens with incredible start page? In the upper left hand side is you have a series of post-it notes that you can, well, write yourself a note on instead of sticking it on your computer monitor because I'm sure people do that. I've done it as well. You can actually go through and do that. And then you can also have a link right here. It would actually, if you click on it, would launch your Gmail. And if you click right here, it would actually launch your calendar. And you can go ahead and very easily put items within Gmail or Calendar. On the right-hand side, this big area, is you have a spot here. This is going to be all my bookmarks uh, that I, I have using. This next area here is going to be my apps. And what you can do with your apps, a lot of times people get annoyed when they have to scroll down real far. So, for example, if I wanted to use TweetDeck, and I have to scroll down because by automatically it'll put in alphabetical order. I can click and drag these anywhere I want. Um, so the one that I have in the upper left-hand corner is going to be Drive. So when I click on a new tab and I want to get to Drive, I can click right here. 
and then it will go ahead and just take me right to my drive account. Um, so the other thing that I have is the ones that is most visited and you can go through and set how many different ones you want to have. Besides my bookmarks here, I also do have bookmarks listed right here and here is also the list of the top um, 10 pages that I've actually closed. So I know we've all been there. We've been on this wonderful web page and then you accidentally clicked on the X instead of the actual tab and you're like, no, what is that page? Well, if you have the incredible start page loaded, all you'd have to do is go right here and then you can go ahead and click on this and it would open up one of the last and you can set your settings on how many pages that you want to have open. And again, that's your incredible start, start page. Hey, Katie. Yeah. On that, if you also, and I don't know if this is across all browsers or just Chrome, but if you do accidentally close a tab and you want that back up, control shift T brings that tab back up as well. Thanks. Versus control T just brings up a new tab. Okay. Um, another couple of uh, favorite applications that I like to use is going to be um, uh, Dropbox. Um, I also have a shortcut for Google Drive. So that was that icon that I showed you that is my second one up there. Um, Slide Rocket, if you have not used Slide Rocket, that's a nice way of being able to incorporate uh, getting some audio with some Google presentations. Uh, your Google Apps for Education administrator would go have to install that and set that up. Um, as of, I believe it was April 24th of 2012, it was one of those uh, applications that your administrator can set up and install and people can record. I did go through and, and work with our social studies department here at the high school, they went through and created some Google presentations and then using the Chromebooks and what we have in the district, they were able to uh, voice over and add some audio. And I know that's one of the things that um, our modern language department was looking at here at Seymour too. How can we do presentations and get audio? We can do it in PowerPoint, but how can we do it in Google? By using Slide Rocket, you can do that. Um, Timer is also a fun one. Um, when you need to time yourself because you're worried that you're going to go over time. Um, timer is going to be an application that you can launch and it would go ahead and start up or you could set an alarm clock and you would go through and time what you want and you would then be able to um, just document what you want to. So for example, you say, okay class, you have five minutes and I want you to do that and you don't want to get distracted by Billy in the corner asking you a question, you can use the timer um, app and it will go ahead and um, allow you to set up what you want to do. Um, Typing Club is one uh, that's set up by Google for you to go through and, and teach and have some proper keyboarding practice. Um, tweet deck for those people that enjoy Twitter. Um, webcam toy. Jessica and I had fun with webcam toy one day. That's a lot of fun. Uh, it is. When you go to your new tab and you set up your webcam toy, um, what you can do is obviously you need to have a webcam. And there are all kinds of different options you can do for doing photos. Um, Fisheye, mirrored, um, all kinds of different aspects. I don't know if it's going to allow me to use my camera twice, so we'll see if it will come up. Um, but basically what you can do is you can go through and take a picture and then you can actually save and send that out. Um, so webcam toy, if you show it to students, they're going to be off task very quickly. Um, but it is kind of fun. It's not allowing me to use my camera because I'm using my camera in my hangout, but webcam toy is an awesome way. Um, you can take a look at taking still life pictures and show some animation. Um, Pixlr is a great application for those of uh, you out there that really like using Photoshop and you're like, oh, but I have a Chromebook and uh, how do I do uh, Photoshop because I can't install a program? Well, all you have to do is you use your extension Pixlr and it is pretty much like Photoshop but online. Um, so that one is awesome. I use that on the Chromebook when I needed to go through and do some really good photo editing. Um, a hello fax is a way that you can go actually sign faxes and send things back um, all online and not have to print things out. And this last one here is not really uh, an app that you use in the Chrome store, um, but I thought some elementary teachers would like to use um, bouncy balls. This is a way for if you put it up on your screen and you needed to monitor the level of noise coming out of your class, um, all you need to do is have a mic and you'd say get bouncing and it would access your microphone. Mm 
once the balls have fallen, uh, up here in the corner I have a microphone. You click on microphone and you have to allow the mic. And then when you make noise, the more noise, the bigger the balls bounce. So that one is, I know, sometimes something that can be used um, at the lower levels when they're trying to teach kids about how loud they need to be within the classroom. How about any of my presenters? Anything else that you have from extensions that you or applications that you like? I just learned a ton of them. <laughs> <laughs> And there are some other real specific ones, but I'm just trying to hit some of the ones that I use a lot. Um, I suppose, well, Google Calendar. Is that what you mean? Like any of the apps? Yeah. Um, um, yeah. When I talk about apps, things like when you click on a new tab, yeah. things that would come up. Okay. Um, when I, oh. my new tab here for my apps, I actually do have a shortcut right here that would go right to Gmail. I actually have one that would go to calendar or search or docs. So if I click on this, what's going to happen is that app is really going to go through and take me right to a document. I don't have to go to drive and then click docs. I use Class Dojo as a class management system, and there is a Google app for that. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but works nice at the lower level. I use it at middle school through high school and it's very nice. So it's a way to manage classroom behavior and you get positive or negative dojo points. Oh. I use um, Google Keep. It's really just, um, it seems like it's just a link that takes you to your Google Keep page, but um, that's pretty handy. Um, so is Evernote mm -hmm. uh, as an app. And WordPress for your blogs. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, one of the other things that has come up when I've done different things on uh, using Chrome, and I, it actually came up most recently when I had a chance to visit Kurt over in Shiocton. Uh, he was trying to go ahead and load up his uh, Google Chrome page. He was going to drive and it was taking forever and it was spinning and spinning and spinning and I was pulling my hair out. I'm like, how do you wait this long? He's like, it always is that way. And I said, did you clean your cache? And he's like, what? Right, Kurt? True story. <laughs> um, <laughs> So going through and cleaning your cache out every once in a while is a good idea because it can really allow your browser to, to pick up speed. Um, if you don't know what cache is on your computer, basically when you're browsing on the web, the computer, your, your browser will go through and store some things in its memory. And then when you go to that page, if you visited it before, it compares that what you have in your memory to what's out there. And it does piece by piece and look and match. And the more things you have in cache for that page, the, the longer it takes to load. So what I have um, is I created a set of directions that I shared out in district for how to clean your cache. So I'll just, I have this linked on the presentation. I'll just pull that up. This is just a, a page of directions of what you can do to go ahead and clear your cache in Chrome. So if you find that you're dogging and your things are lagging and it, your drive is taking an enormous amount of time to load, um, these are the directions that you can go ahead and use in order to make your browsing experience read up a little bit. Um, that's all I have for Chrome, but um, as you can hear, I kind of like Chrome and it's fun to use. And it, it, it's a nice way of being able to take your information no matter where you go. Mm -hmm. Katie, could you imagine going back to what it was like 10 years ago? <laughs> you know, where we only had Internet Explorer. And but at that time it was good, but now we've just upped up. When you take a look mm -hmm. at what, what the web browser can do now because we're writing in HTML5 code versus what we were writing before in, in 3, um, it, it's really changed the types of things we can do. And that's why when you take a look at apps and extensions now, is just the next part of your browsing experience. And once you find them, it's hard to go back to mm -hmm. just plain pages. Now, because your students are you're at Google Apps Redo School and they have access to all this as well. Do you find that, well, how have your students changed with regards to how they utilize the, the web? 
Um, I have one student in class specifically that every day he likes to show me the Bing startup page uh, just to annoy me and I know he does it and I keep saying that's great that it's got a fancy page but what kind of search results are you getting? And he just likes to egg me on. Um, they like the interactivity, how everything pulls together. Um, oftentimes they think they already know how to do something on it and I try to show them something new and that gets a little bit of resistance but then when I show them the easier way of doing it, it's like that light bulb of, oh that is a lot easier so Katie when you're working in a lab environment and your kids are logging on multiple computers throughout the school during the day um, are you having them log out of their Chrome experience every time as well and log back in or is there any issues on that level um, what I have found in a lab experience, because I do teach in a classroom lab, um, when you install Chrome for the first time, and the first person that signs into Chrome, mm -hmm. if they don't sign out, that profile is there for everyone, as well as their um, passwords if they allowed Chrome to set it. So it's really important that that first person that logs into a classroom lab setting when they're done, they sign out and then they actually go in and delete that user under the Chrome setting because then it won't be there for everyone else. It just happens to be that first time, even if your uh, computer uh, lab, one device was re-imaged and it's the first time anyone has launched it on that new re-image, that they need to make sure that they log out of uh, Chrome and then delete that user and then it tends to work fine because the students don't see either one that way. Okay. Uh, Jess, did we have any um, questions from any of the viewers? No, uh, in the chat, it, people have been sharing apps. And we've been making a list of all the apps you've been talking about. So it's that's great. Nice to see a collection. Super. Um, so basically, what we're going to do right now is I'm just going to go ahead and end the um, the live broadcast. Um, if, my presenters, if you want to stay on for a second, but otherwise, thank you for the, your live viewers. And if you have any questions, make sure you shoot me an email at Katie Grassel or Katie Grassel at. Thanks for viewing today.